Good morning, my friends. Happy Wednesday. Here we are again, back around to Wednesday. I um I did a oil painting workshop <clears throat> at Square Pear Gallery in Kennett Square this past Sunday and Monday, and it was so much fun. <clears throat> I hope a few of my new friends show up here this morning. They might have to watch for them. Um, <clears throat> it was such a fun workshop, but I always get a little bit tired. It's funny doing something that like painting and teaching, I love doing it and I don't feel like I'm working, but at the end of it, I feel exhausted. It's so weird. Hi, Carol Ann. Hi, Susie. <clears throat> Good morning, Sherry. Hi, Barb. Hi, Colleen. How's everyone doing? So um, for today, I'm going to, good morning, Ellen. I'm going to paint, let me see. I just, so this one person had reached out to me about making these cookies. You probably saw them in my story. And now her name just fell out of my head. I should have written it down, but <clears throat> you can still see it in my story, I think, right now. And she's making these cookies and asked if she could use a piece of my artwork on one of them. And they look so cute. And they were carrots. And I was looking for my old carrot reference from that painting that I did. And I totally can't find it. But I found this. A friend of mine had taken this picture of a radish. I love radishes. So I'm going to paint that radish today. So I'm not sure if I want to paint it. Um... I'm kind of liking what I'm doing with the lemons right now where I'm doing kind of a random transparent color background and then going over top. So I could maybe do like like permanent rose, like a yellowish color and then green at the top and gradate the background and then do the painting over top. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? I could either do something about this makes me want to paint it really tight, but um, I don't want to because <clears throat> I'm loving this style of being super loose so i think that's what i'm going to do this morning so thanks for coming i didn't announce it today because i was so tired at the end of the day yesterday i thought maybe i am not going to go live tomorrow but i always find the energy <laughs> nothing like a little rest because i was really feeling tired and thinking that oh i want to make sure i have my panel the right way i do <clears throat> that i had the energy to do this but i do I always have the energy to wake up and paint. And having you guys with me while I do it is just icing on the cake, right? <clears throat> but the workshop was so much fun. I love that because what's better than painting and making new friends? Not much. Not much of anything. It's better than that. So I'm just gradating my background a little bit. And I'm going to go to red. So like the red colors are going to mix into whatever I put in the background there. The greens up here. And we'll see how it looks. I don't know. Might love it. Might hate it. But it's always good to keep experimenting and playing. So what's new with everybody? Um, where's everybody listening from today? Ellen, my gosh, right? The workshop paintings were gorgeous. Like, you would not know. I was just writing a blog post about that. And you would not know which painting was the teacher painting and which was the student's painting. They all turned out so nice. And I love seeing how different they were. Like that's also fun to see how they, um, you know, everybody's paintings are a little bit different. They all have their own kind of signature to them. Loved your students' pictures. You posted such talent. I know. Oh, this Irma, I did transparent yellow green at the top, and then I did Indian yellow, and that's permanent rose. It's really pretty, isn't it? <laughs> Gosh, I love color. Okay. Clean up. I'm cleaning up my palette. Yeah, every time I do workshops, I learn new things, too. I was taking notes of things that I wanted to remember for the next time. I can't get the comments to move out of the way. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Gail. There you go. All right, let me see this little side thing showing there, too. All right, is it back far enough? My pencil grid smears when I paint over. Oh, well, that's a good question. Gabby, so for one thing, technically, and I don't always do it, I do in my large paintings, but you should use charcoal and not paint because, or pencil, because they say over time, I was looking for something here, I got up out of my seat, um, they say over time um, that the pencil marks can bleed up through the paint. I heard that somewhere, so I was trying when I do larger paintings to use 
um, <laughs> tired. <laughs> I'll forget my words more than normal today. Uh, charcoal. But then I spray it with a quick spray of, of fixative. It's uh, I can't find my jar, my can of it right now, but it's a spray product and it's called fixative and it fixes it so that it doesn't smear. Um, on these small ones, I don't do that. I wouldn't even worry if it did smear a little bit. I just make lighter pencil marks, you know, maybe your pencil's too soft. I would use like, you know, a, a two H or something like a harder pencil that might be it. But if you do use charcoal, then you do have to fix it. Cause that would definitely smear. Gosh, my coffee's cold already. That's just, that's discouraging. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word I wanted. Okay. What am I doing next here? Um, I have no idea. Maybe I'm just, I'm not even going to wipe anything off there. I'm going to use my pigment sticks next and then we'll mix colors. Um, some of my pigment sticks are dirty here. Good morning, Chris. Morning, Samantha. A watercolor. That's a great idea, Susan. She uses, Susan says I use watercolor pencil. I would have not even thought of that. That's a great idea. Yeah, I have these. I guess they are watercolor pencils that I use when I do a lot of my acrylics. How do you get your grid lines on your reference? This is an app called... Um, See that little icon? It's called hashtag, no, it's called grid hashtag, G-R-I-D, and then the hashtag mark. And then you just go into the app and add your, actually, I should, so, and then when you can get, um, you know, you can make your lines as heavy or light as you want. You can do rows of however many, and then you just hold your finger on there and save the grid and image. And I'm going to do that because my iPad's getting old and it keeps losing battery. So I'm going to close out of all those things and go to my photos and find it. I think my iPad's tired because I have too many photos on there. Could be. Hi, Jessica. Jessica was in our class this weekend. Everyone was so great at painting, like you would think that they were all very experienced. Some people had um, definitely had art experience, but um, some people said they had never used oils, and some people had, um, hadn't painted in years, years and years. So, and they all looked, each painting was gorgeous. That my these are called RNF pigment sticks, and I love them. It's like oil paint and stick form, and they're not a necessary thing. But I just love the little. If I get to the end of the painting and bits pop, bits of the color show through from these oil sticks, I just love how it looks, um, and it kind of helps me keep my painting spontaneous. I can't be detailed using something this big and thick, right? So I like to find ways to keep myself loose. always my goal it's not that I do love super realistic tight paintings too it's just I I'm always trying to loosen up my own style just a personal preference um I think that's a good start uh, so I need to um mix some really like that fuchsia is just so fun sometimes I find that um when I'm painting and I try to mix a color that that's it's that bright it's super hard so I'm honestly going to use a little bit more of my transparent color on there before I start mixing colors um and hope that that shows through in the end because that's really how you keep it super bright no wait it's just Okay, so I need red screens and a neutral light color for the background. 
sounds fun. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to pull this down here to my palette. I love mixing colors. Getting a little reflection here. I hope that's okay. There's not much I can do about it. I really do need to get a lighting expert to help me figure all that lighting part of it out. Um, okay, I have my palette knife. And I'm going to start mixing like a really dark maroon color. Oh, I wanted to put some more permanent rose out here on my palette too before I get too far along. Oops. Oh, so this morning, remember I did that um, interview on Window Cell Chats, which is my very favorite podcast. I, like, on a whim, wrote to Margot, who's the person who does it, and asked her if she'd want to interview me. Like, how reckless crazy is that? Like, I'm usually too scared to ever do something like that. And I did it, and she said yes. So she interviewed me, I think, about a month ago. And she wrote and said that it's going to go live today, but it's not up there yet. I don't know if it's a technical difficulty or if it's because she's on the West Coast and it's like the middle of the night or super early in the morning. But um, I will definitely share here on, on Instagram and, and in my newsletter to let you know where to find the podcast if you'd like to listen to it. And if you're not on my newsletter list and you want to be, just send me a, a DM and I'll happily add you. Yeah, Allie, I'm afraid to listen. Isn't that funny? I wasn't, I wasn't terribly afraid to put myself out on a limb and ask her about doing it. But now that it exists, I'm afraid to listen to it because I'm afraid I'll, if I said something stupid, then I'll hate it. Do you ever have that? Like kind of that irrational voice is like, <laughs> it's nuts. And well, maybe you guys will listen and tell me if it sounds bad and then I won't listen if it does. <laughs> That's a good plan, right? That's a good plan. You tell me if you listen. And I say anything stupid, then I won't listen in ever. <laughs> you know that thing when you like hear yourself talk and you're like, I don't really sound like that, do I? That's not what my voice sounds like. But it does to everyone else. Why is it that your voice sounds different to yourself in your own head than it does to other people? What that is? Oh, so I said, where's everybody um, listening from this morning? It's going to be amazing. My, Michael said, I've listened to your Learn to Paint podcast several times. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I'm also afraid to listen to that again. That was the first one I ever did. So this is my second podcast interview. And we had a lot of technical difficulties. So I, I'm hoping it sounds okay because I don't know if it was my internet or her internet. But usually when she does that, you're on a Zoom call and you can see each other. Well, it kept like, you know, breaking up. So we had to um, not see each other and we still had a lot of issues. So the flow felt a little wonky because we couldn't, we couldn't just talk. It wouldn't just... It didn't flow, but it was still fun. Margo's lovely. She was very fun to talk to. Now I'm looking for white paint here. Um, Vicky's from South Carolina. Uh, and I lost my white paint. Oh my goodness. Here's white paint. Alberta, Canada. Central Alberta. Christine. Um, I'm trying to think what I need here. I need, I only need a little, there's a little bit in there that looks a little blue to me, a little purple. So I'm going to add a little purple into my white here. Get like a really light white, but it's, I don't know what about it, it looks a little purple to me. Hello from Jak Jakarta, Indonesia. Wow, what time is it in Indonesia, Shirley? Do you start with alizarin for the reds? Oh, I started, this started mostly with 
um, hmm. magenta. And then I used this red that I have out here. This really bright one is called Peril Red, P-Y-R-R-O-L-E. Let me see where that is. Is it right here? Yeah. Pyrol or Peril, Pyrol Red. <clears throat> and then this is Permanent Magenta. This string is Permanent Magenta. So now I need um, dark greens. And then I need... I keep kind of making my palette weird here. That's not the most efficient use of space. I'm going to have to mix my... Uh, middle colors up there, my background colors. All right, I need more greens. And I'm gonna do a little bit of this yellow. Everyone was saying during the class that it's amazing how little paint you really need to do a painting. You need more of that yellow. Madeline, how are you? Um, need more of that. a little bit more. I'm going to put some video blue extra pale in there. Because I love that color. I love that kind of sap green and video blue extra pale. It makes kind of a neat little bit minty. But a little bit more. I need a little more of that. <clears throat> they do, Irma. They feel like spring. I am ready for spring. I think it's not going to be great weather here. Um, I hope I can't see that. At least maybe through the weekend, my husband said, because I have a bunch of paintings I need to start varnishing things. and I don't think that's going to happen, because we do that outside in the garage. Keep all the fumes out there. Okay, that looks good. Now I need like a shadow color and a white background color. So I'm going to take a little, um, like this is a little bit of black and white mixed together. I'm going to put a little ultramarine blue in it. I'm going to lighten it. Some gray. need too many and then I just need like a white and I don't want my background to be solid white it wouldn't anyway because of all that color that I have underneath there yeah they are like I always say if your palette looks great together your painting's bound to turn out or at least that's certainly helpful right I always think all paintings turn out well. It's just how much the artist the artist likes what they created more than anything. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me see. Oh, I like that looks good. They all look great together. Okay. I think I'm happy with those colors. Um all right, let's see what happens here. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Oh, it's already fun. All right. So I'm going to use a big brush, and am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. I'm going to go in and do my darks. I have a lot of light coming in. I'm not complaining, but <laughs> through my window, and it's hard to see. So 
So what's everyone having this morning? Coffee, tea, something else fun? I'm having my fat cow coffee, but it's already... I must have gotten up earlier than I realized. Like, I only have one sip left. That always makes me a little sad when I get to the end. Well, I might have a little bit more than one sip, but it's not... Um, it's not very uh, hot anymore. Good morning, Sarah. Ellen, you're drinking water. Trakel. Oh, no, today, right now I'm using, I do have the Trakel 10 out. I might have been using that earlier, but this is my rosemary and company Eclipse Short Flat Number 12. It's a little larger. So this is the Trakel. And then the rosemary's a little larger. I wanted to go um, a little larger today to see if I can... I need to get more of these rosemary brushes. Oh, Irma's got coffee brewing now. Carol Ann's drinking hibiscus tea. Uh, do I ever use long brushes? Oh, do you mean that the that this part's long? Um, I. I think I might have a few, but so I like the bounce of this when I use that are too long. It's like they, they, um, <laughs> it's like long hair. When your hair is long, it does what it wants more than what you want. <laughs> does that make any sense? It's like you, I feel, find that they're a little harder to control because they have so much bend to them, but there's no wrong brushes. It's super fun to try all different kinds of things. That's a weird thing to compare it to hair, but I guess it is like hair. I love trying anything. So for France, um, the company that I'm um, hoping to get our arts, some art supplies from, um, they are sending me a couple brushes to try. So I always love when I find something new like that. But it's so hard because you have to like buy so much stuff to experiment and figure out what you like. <clears throat> oh, it's already fun, isn't it? All right, my shadows. This little shadow there. This is very dark underneath. Here. Trying to put down those brush strokes and not fuss with them. It's already evolving. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking a little bit about <clears throat> where I want to go next in the painting. It's a little light area right there. The larger the brush you use, the more you really have to, um, it forces you not to get too in the weeds of the details. Not always easy to do. I'm going to just kind of blend this ever so slightly. Is it 8 by 8? It's um, 6 by 8. A little bit smaller than that. All right. Um... Yeah, six by eight and eight by eight are, are my favorite sizes. 
Now I'm trying to look, so you see that reflected light in there? This looks darker back here. So I'm gonna blend that a little more. Now that kind of made a mess, didn't it? But I can fix that, <clears throat> I think. But I like that reflected light, but it glows a little bit. So I don't really wanna lose that. So I just need to be careful to let that stay. I'll get my medium. And I do want to keep it a little. I don't want to be too detailed with it. Beautiful composition, so refreshing. Oh, thank you. She said, beautiful composition, so refreshing to watch your demos. It's so fun to do my demos. <clears throat> thank you. Um, I guess I'll do some more, lay in a little bit more of this green area, because then I can work on that background. This comes out here. I want to let some of that gold stay there if I can. Let me say I kind of map things out, but then you have to let it evolve on its own. You can't always have control over what bits. I guess you could if you really planned ahead, but I'm not much of a. I don't want to think. I don't want to think that hard. That's not really true. I just I like it to turn out more spontaneous. I guess. <clears throat> yes, they're oil paints. I always say painting with acrylic paints is like painting with um, plastic. And I, don't get me wrong, I like painting with acrylic paints too, but painting with um, oil paints is like painting with butter. It does take a little bit to get used to the feel of it because it really does, um, you can make a mess very easily. It's part of the, the fun though. Seeing what happens. I always say, if you don't like what you paint, you can always throw it away. It's not brain surgery. It's not that important. So that takes the pressure off. I have to blend a little of the... <clears throat> Put some of the lighter. I would like some of that transparent color to show. Um, no, they're not water-soluble oil. They're regular oil paint. I have used water-soluble oils. They're super easy for cleanup, but there's not quite the same selection of color, and I'm just used to regular oils. I just use very little solvent. I try to keep it as healthy as I can doing it. <clears throat> but, yeah, I prefer... I want some of that to show through. I'll do a little bit of a transition color here. <clears throat> and I'm cleaning off my brush in between each time. I have a sip of my coffee. Yeah, so it's been a busy week for me already between teaching. I'm still totally not finished unpacking all of that yet. Um, and work's been busy. I, I like how this, this is one of those paintings that sometimes the in-between parts are just as fun as how it looks when it's finished. Like, I'd like to let it be kind of loose like that. Love the looseness, yes. Uh, well, it's a word for me, for sure. Susan, I say looseness. I love looseness. He's aiming for looseness. <clears throat> I 
Happy Teacher Grace. That's a fun name. Do you teach art? Love it at this stage. It would be tempted to stop right there. I know someday I say when I get enough confidence, that will happen. I'll be like, yep, finished, and just leave it as is. I don't know. There's something about doing it right now. I feel like I'm not finished. But as I keep learning and growing, I'm hoping that at the loose stage, I'll feel finished. <clears throat> Yeah, and I love bits of that color showing through. That's pretty light right in there. I love seeing brush strokes. like how it looks I'm not gonna fuss oh yeah as I say that I'm gonna go right here though okay I like how that background looks and I don't want to see I'll keep going back in and working at it and then it loses something <clears throat> Kathy says can you explain how the under layer and top layer interact do they mix or separate is it thick over thin it is pretty much I would say that my background was all transparent and as I go back over top, the colors I mixed are more opaque, and they are also um, thicker. Like you can put, if I touch very lightly and I make a brush stroke, it kind of lays on top. And I love when that happens, but little bits of what's underneath there shows through. That's always my goal, and I feel like I don't have a lot of control over that. It just sort of happens. It's like happy accident when when the uh, background color peeks through at the end. And then it's stopping before you go, take it too far. That's the other hard part to do. Transparent means with medium. Oh, Kathy, um, some colors are more transparent than others. So usually on the back like of your, um, let me see here. Let me find a paint tube that I could show you an example. It'll show you on the back like this. <clears throat> this is ultramarine blue. And if you can see right, you know, right here, that's a little square that has no, so it's transparent. So that means that if you like paint this with a little bit of medium or whatever over top of like a strip of black, it's transparent. The black will show through. But then there are other colors like, um, let's see if this has the square on it. Not all companies tell you the same way. But if you're using a color that's not transparent, that'll be filled in solid. And then there are some that are semi-transparent. And they, um, they're in between. And that, that little square would be um, half at an angle. It's half white, half black. So it's kind of how it handles. If you do acrylics, like a, acrylic, like um, the uh, fluid acrylics are transparent. And some of the acrylics are opaque. Greens. There's a little lightness right there. 
I do need to look at my stem, like this one bit of stem here is a little more purple. Oh, what did Ellen say, Irma? What did I miss? Ellen said, oh, so beautiful already. Thank you. By the transparent layer is still wet. So, it, oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I stopped in the middle of explaining that, didn't I? Yes, because it's wet. And then I put these colors on top. They just kind of blend together. So you can see through there a little bit that I have yellow behind there, that I have kind of that, um, well, I guess that was green, yellow. And you can see the pink showing through down here. I, that's something I've just been playing with is doing different transparent colors underneath and seeing how it looks when it when it pops through at the end. I'm always experimenting. So it's not necessarily that you have to do it that way. It's just fun to see what happens. That is the fun thing. One of the fun things about a way of paints is that you can play with it, and you just never know what you're going to get. <clears throat> I do acrylic underpainting and oil on top. Yep, you can totally do that. Because acrylic dries. You just can't put acrylic paint over oil paint. <coughs> I have sometimes <clears throat> done like a full coating of like a bright pink underneath and painted on top of that. Acrylic underpainting. I don't know if I said the, if I said what I was thinking. <clears throat> I'm still using this great big brush. I'm probably not going to switch to anything else unless I get like a little area where I feel like I can't do what I want, but I think I'll be fine. <clears throat> and now I'm going to like kind of have to think about it. I don't want to <clears throat> take it too far either. I want to keep this, this spontaneity that I have. So I kind of need to slow down a little bit and think about what I'm doing instead of just putting down marks. The further I get along in the painting, the more I have to consciously think about what I'm doing. I always say art teaches me all my life lessons like patience, slowing down, taking my time, really seeing, being in the moment, all those things. <clears throat> it's so, yes, I love that it's painterly. Thank you, Allie. Is your sweet kitty watching me paint this morning? Painterliness. Michael says the background is so good. Yeah, I, it's hard for me not to go back in and touch that again, you know. Because I see little like that, but I don't. I want it to be like that, so I'm gonna force myself not to touch it. Why is that so challenging? It's because we all we were talking about. I think um, <laughs> she watched. Oh, good. Yeah, was she done? She was like, "Yeah, I'm so over this. I don't really want to watch a radish." I do love radishes. Um. I forget what I was talking about apropos, right? We were talking about how, why is it that like in our culture, I think it's a lot of it's our culture of us always thinking things need to be perfect. And I said, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to worry about things being perfect. I want to enjoy the Im imperfect, perfectly imperfect. And I don't even want to do where it, it, looks effortless but it wasn't I want it to just be fun and if it's not fun I don't want to do it that sounds crazy is there such a thing how many greens did I use I used um 
uh, I think I used sap green. I used a little bit of, for the really, really dark green, this corp, no, the out oh, permanent sap green, right? Uh, and this cadmium green, but you could really, you, you could mix all those greens just with like sap green and, um, lemon yellow. That's all you would really need. Perfectionism is a big struggle. It is. I don't want, I don't want to worry about that. And I always say I, you know, lived with my business and everything. Like I'm, <clears throat> I would wake up in the middle of the nights worrying about typos. Like I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. So as you can see in my writing, <laughs> when I send out emails, I really don't worry about it anymore. If I have typos, so be it. I mean, I like when people tell me I have typos so I can fix them, but <laughs> I don't, I don't stress over them anymore. think that I'm pretty good on those um, leaves. I think I need to dive into painting a little bit more in here and then I might be finished. Time wise we're good. Gotta brush my clean my brush. I struggle with pet portrait commission stresses me and I try to let go. Yes, me too. And you know, my paintings always turn out so colorful. Like I just recently did um, a commission for of a golden retriever and it was so cute, but it was so blue and purple. Like I'm always afraid I'll send something to someone and they'll be like, but my dog's not blue and purple. <laughs> but I'm like, I can't help it. It just turned out that way. I do I love do, I do love doing pet portraits but I'm more comfortable when I know someone knows my style enough not to that I don't have that voice in my head saying they're going to hate this because you're painting their dog in weird colors. How many hours do you paint a day? Oh, I would say I paint maybe 2 hours a day. I would love to paint more and I'm going to work my way to doing that more but I I have a marketing and design business so I have that to do and plus doing this art stuff it takes a lot of time like I spend a lot more time than you would think um uh preparing things to post um photo correcting things entering art shows getting ready to teach like all kinds of other things too so the art part of it I would like to do more of but yeah real life gets in the way how do we feel like it's bright enough? Um, I'm going to clean my brush. I need a little bit more. Um, I felt like that was a little dark in there. Now, where else? I need really my lightest lights, but I'm not quite ready, but pretty close. Um, yeah, I might soon be able to do my very lightest lights. I think there's like a little... division right there and a little bit of so charming how about a bit yeah I think I might need to do a veggie series right definitely that would be very fun and my I've been painting those um lemons my gosh I'm obsessed with that I'm gonna do more lemons I think this weekend a big lemon hopefully all right I think I just need my highlights do you see anything else I missed love kitchen art me too Ellen I love kitchen art Um, does that 
look right. Should soften this a little bit. Say yes to more veggies. You can never have too many veggies, can you, Irma? I am happy to paint more veggies. Maybe we'll do a little veggie series this um, this month. How would you like that? Should I do more veggies this month? That would be very fun. I like this edge. I run the risk of messing it up by doing that, but I think it looks good now. Um only thing okay i will i'll do veggies i don't like that chunk of blue in there so i'm gonna lay a serious bit of color in over top so i'm gonna try to lay down like um a thick bit of color so that it lays on top of that that looks um a little it looks a little dirty i guess it's, yeah that's better Green veg for St. Patty's Day. Is St. Patty's Day on a Wednesday? I don't even know what day of the week it is right now. I'm happy to do that. Maybe celery. Wouldn't that be fun? I love celery. Kim, this is just so amazing. I love it. I want to go paint one. Oh, good, Barb. That's what I want to do. Inspire it. Go paint one. Absolutely go paint one. That's what you can do today a radish okay I think I'm finished I think if I go too far here oh it's on a Friday this year oh Allie you know because you've been doing so many store windows haven't you I love all your windows I wish you were doing them near me I don't know. You know what I'm doing? I'm just fussing and I don't want to do that. No, wait. I do need to fuss one more bit here. I want this. Okay. I'm going to stop fussing. I have a photo of a bunch of radishes to paint. Oh, good. Hey. I'm going to sign it. And we will do a series of veggies. That sounds like so much fun. Okay, I'll take it out of here and show you. Okay, can you hear me now? So there's my reference. There's my painting. And like I love like the little bits of blue and the yellows are showing through back there. I didn't cover it all up. And you see the pink showing through in the background. I love that. My very, very simple palette. Always a fun time. I never know what'll happen. <laughs> and thanks for being patient, just in case I'd make a mess. One of these times, I know I will, because it does happen. Gotta be kind to yourself, though, and just try new things. So, thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. I, um, I'll i post about when the um, windowsill chats thing gets posted. I'll check on that when I go back to my computer in a minute. Um, and please listen and leave a rating, like that you liked it if you liked it because that helps um that will help like margo with her rankings and you know all the algorithm craziness looks like you can paint a watermelon with the rest on your palette oh yeah maybe i need to that sounds like fun good idea um and what else so the window search and if anybody wants to be on my email list and you're not already just send me a direct message and I'll, I'll add you onto my list I'm going to do a newsletter today with little stuff about Monday about what I painted here today this I will save this on my um, blog on my website in which there's a link in my bio and I'll also put this um, up on my YouTube channel so if you're there be sure to give me a thumbs up and and like that and subscribe too so thanks for coming and hanging out with me guys Love hanging out with you. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day. And I will see you again next week. Goodbye. Thanks.